you know, the first thing is I really would like to give a heartfelt thank you to our, to our fans. Uh, this hasn't been an easy ride or season for any of us, but in particular them, and for, for them to support us from start to finish. There just aren't many fan bases that, that have that. And today's crowd was incredible coming off the heels of a spring break with our students and just really would like to thank uh, them for sticking with us and believing in, in what we're doing as we move forward. Um, I had no problem in terms of today's effort level, togetherness, how we prepared. I thought we came into the game with our best foot forward. Uh, a lot of good things happened in the game. You know, Marquette is a really difficult team to score on. The fact that we were able to score 80 points, and if you look at our offense, you know, 26 for 54 from the field. You know, we had 12 turnovers. I'd, I'd say we had three or four nervous turnovers at the beginning of the game. You throw those out, and uh, we scored 80 points. You know, got to the free throw line 27 times. Uh, defensively, that's really the storyline. We, we just wear down. And sometimes it's inexperience, sometimes it's you know lack of physicality, sometimes it's being in the right place or wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, but I will also tell you, Marquette is a terrific offensive team, and that's even without Tyler Kolick. Uh, Cam Jones, he's one of the best players that I've coached against as a guard on offense. It is so easy for him. You know, it wasn't like we were breaking down or not trying. He had 30 last time we played him. He had, I think, 34. He also had nine assists and two turnovers. Uh, you know, I, I just think that that backcourt, Tyler Kolick and Cam Jones, if they're not America's best, they're certainly one of the top two or three. And uh, I also thought Oso was terrific. An older guy that's been through this league several times. is 24 points uh, and, and coupled with Cam Jones' 30. We couldn't, we didn't, we didn't guard those guys. We couldn't guard them. Um, so, you know, they ended up shooting 66% in the second half. We fought to the bitter end like we've done throughout our season, and we weren't good enough, and we pulled up short. But to score 80 points on them here in the Centos Center, um, that's something that I feel good about. And I guess my final comment is I think Quincy Oliveri is really understated with the type of season he's had. I mean, he had 32 points. When you look at our key games, biggest games, the schedule we've played, how consistent he's been, I believe he's probably going to lead the Big East in scoring. And uh, I was filling out the, you know, the first and second team ballot, you know, all conference ballot. I mean, I could put 20, 20 really good names on there for for 11 spots. I mean, you just start going through it, and the top three teams in our league. I think there's nine first or second team all conference players. That's just in three teams. And for Quincy to do what he's done, lead the league in scoring uh, on our team, I mean, he's had an exceptional year. And I just really want to highlight him because, you know, we recruited him from Rice. I don't know if anybody really expected him to come in and do what he's done. But he's been a godsend. He's had an incredible year and his 32 points is a big reason that we were right there to have a chance to win today's game. So the fact that this was his last home game, you know, kudos to Quincy uh, for showing up and playing the way he did. Coach Lazar, season high 33 minutes. Uh, what have you seen from his game over the last, you know, this week really with the performance he had at Butler and the minutes he had tonight? You know, Lazar is a great example, and there's three levels to him. One, he's an international student. English is in his first language. And I think that if you follow the careers of a lot of guys like Lazar, they hit their stride at different times. A lot of times it's not even in their first, maybe even midway through their second year. And then all of a sudden they seem to, to find themselves. Uh, Lazar's had a rough go of it in terms of the opportunity. Uh, there's many weeks that he went without playing in a game. Uh, I've coached him hard. We've held him accountable. We've tried to bring out the best in him. But maybe it took the game 31, and he became the player that I, I really thought he could have become maybe as early as November. But it's taken him some time. Second is big guys a lot of times are like that. 
They just, they just don't hit their stride or feel comfortable until a certain point. And then once they hit that point, it seems like they never look back. Jason Love would be an example. If you, if you, if you took Jason Love's freshman year at Xavier and you judged him only by that first year, you could have never predicted he, that he would become one of Xavier's all-time winningest players, right? And uh, so, and he's a freshman. So he's an international student. He's a big guy and a freshman. You combine all those elements. It's certainly taken him here to late February. But even against Butler, I thought he played well. He's playing better in practice, but he has not given in. He's kept working, similar to Kachi. So really impressed with both of those guys. And you're right. If you can play the way he played in tonight's game against Marquette, then I think you know that you know he has a, a really a bright future. So I'm really happy for Lazar. And uh, nothing has come easy for him. We haven't given him an inch. He's earned everything. And I think it should be very rewarding for him just seeing finally the opportunity uh, come to fruition. But it's hard to win and beat Marquette with freshmen. You know, some of the key moments down the stretch, he's matched up against Oso, and he tried hard. He did the best he could. He just not, not there yet from an experience level. Sean, I asked uh, Quincy this question, and it was about how you know symbolic was this game of your entire season. And he said it's really symbolic of the whole Big East as a conference, and, and it's like this every night. What do you take from this game in terms of kind of how it represented uh, represents your whole season, the way you guys battled, but in a lot of cases came up short? I told the guys after we lost at St. John's in our season opener in the Big East that playing and coaching in this year's Big East – it reminds me a lot of when you listen to NFL coaches and players talk about the parity, the season. There's the huge difference between UConn and everybody. But Creighton and Marquette are outstanding teams. It would not surprise me at all if any one of those three, UConn's the easy answer, get all the way to Phoenix in the Final Four. And then we have a number of other teams that are very good, capable of winning games in a tournament. But the difference between being in fourth place and ninth place in this league is simply about six plays. That's what it is. Each of us made or didn't make plays throughout the course of our season, and that's what determines the difference between being the fifth place team and the eighth place team. And what, that's what Quincy's referring to. Every night you're playing against good players, well-prepared teams, good coaches, 10 home games, 10 road games, round robin, it's the best. Uh, it, it brings out the best in all of us. You know, we didn't have enough. You know, to go through the 20-game stretch, there's just so many different moments where we've come close, but we just didn't have enough. And now that becomes our quest, my job to fix that and get healthy. Um, I was going through it in Kansas City. I'll let you guys do the research because I, I don't want to cry here uh, in my last – game and start making excuses but when we were in Kansas City and we just lost to Texas in last year's Sweet 16 we have 14 players that either played in that game or in that locker room or that we've signed to play that did not play tonight 14 that, that weren't a part of our team this season the 14th is Dalen Swain we just lost him so that's very difficult to do, uh, and I, I think that that turnover is something that you want to avoid. Injuries, different things that, that we went through, that doesn't bode well to play in this year's Big East. But I will tell you, our guys have fought, have worked. We've had very few problems in terms of attitude and effort all season long. It's never been easy for us, and we just have to continue to take that fight into next week in Madison Square Garden. And when we play, we want to be the best we can be. I thought tonight we really had moments where that was the best version of this year's team. And uh, we just didn't have enough to beat Marquette. You just don't have room for error when you're playing against a team like them, even though they didn't have Tyler Kolick. You mentioned last season. At this point, you were sitting up there. You're heading to the Big East tournament, and you know you're going to be an NCAA tournament team. And this year – you know you need to win four games in four days and win the conference tournament. I'm just curious, like, how do you gauge at this point 
you know, do, do you look at the season as a whole and, and look at how it went maybe not the way you wanted it to go? And, and what's that like in your head right now? Yeah, it, it's really not for me. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't walk out to here disappointed or frustrated. I knew when we were in the Bahamas that if Jerome Hunter and Zach Freeman were not a part of our team and weren't able to play this season, that it was going to be difficult for us. And it has been. But I think our approach has been one where we have tried to bring out the best in our younger guys. Man, I don't know if I've ever rode three players, Dez, Quincy, and Davion, harder, meaning playing them the entire game, playing with po pace, asking them to score, asking them to take care of the ball, asking them to play really good defense, and doing it for 31 games straight. I mean, those three guys deserve a lot of credit. Des maybe hasn't shot the ball from the three-point line as well as he would have liked or we would have liked. But when he adds that dynamic, that final piece to what he does, he's going to be an outstanding player. Think about where he was a year ago. He was a version of Lazar or Kachi or Trey. He averaged four points a game. We just never had to depend on him last year. If we would have, a lot of the results of this year would have come our way simply because he's a young, talented player who's just not there yet. But the jump Dez has made, I mean, you talk about who's some of the most improved players in the Big East, I would think he would be up, up there. Same thing with Davion. When we got Davion, he was very quiet, trying to figure out what we wanted, trying to fit in. And I believe this, he's become one of the Big East's best point guards. I mean, and I thought even today, he had a few more turnovers than he usually does, but like, he was 5 for 10 from the floor, 6 for 8 from the free throw line, 4 rebounds, 8 assists, 3 turnovers, and 16 points. He's done it every single game. Those three just needed just Zach's 16 points per game or Jerome's 10 points and 8 rebounds. And, and we weren't able to do it. Can't really talk about it. But that's why I'm not disappointed. I think taking over our program two years ago and building it, you know, you have some things sometimes that happen. It's up to us to come out of the gates next year with a lot more answers than questions. And, and look, like every coach and program, you cross your fingers and you need some good fortune as well. Even Dalen Swain, you know, you forget Dalen hasn't been with us the last two games. You know, he's a promising young player that we've played a lot. We could have used him tonight. So, you know, you almost forget that he, he's not available. Uh, but... So we move on, and you know, until it's next year, we have to be ready for practice. We have to go to New York playing with a lot of joy, and, and we have to be ready to go. It, it's, it's the greatest conference tournament that, that, that exists. I played in it, and I remember there are teams that I was on as a player where we limped into Madison Square Garden, and I remember thinking, like, if I was ever a coach – I don't ever want the team that I'm a part of to limp into this tournament. Regardless of what has happened, you want to approach the Big East tournament with a lot of spirit, a lot of energy to be the best that you can be. Because a win in that tournament, you know, it, it almost counts for two. And that, that becomes our goal. And we're obviously going to – I think we play Butler. So we have to be ready for them. We're very familiar with them. They're very familiar with us. They took it to us last game, and uh, we have to be able to, to respond and, and be better against them this time.